Hello there everyone and welcome back to TNO The Last is of Europe in which we're playing as RK Central Africa. Oh my, but orders to the mayor of Stanleyville, which is a result of the event or doing the focus of the Congo Lake training. Reichs Commissar Müller has recently signed a significant deal with a group of international companies to establish a shipping consortium on the Congo Sea to be based in Stanleyville. It's expected that the number of European employees on the eastern shore to rise exponentially from the oncoming trade expansion. It is therefore required of your administration to provide the necessary sanitary arrangements to properly avoid the slowdown of economic activity caused by poor health conditions. Consider these. Insect bone diseases, like good old malaria and yellow fever, are the leading cause of death for Europeans in your region. It is your responsibility to perform adequately the DDT fumigation and to levy heavy fines on anyone or any who allows water to accumulate on their property. Mosquito population should be halved until the start of the large scale shipping activities. Sexually transmitted diseases, oh my, are also an issue. You should perform inspections in the city's brothel and expel any sick prostitutes. A medical team must be pl placed on standby for any emergencies on the company HQ to lessen the risk of, of impairment caused by accidents. Continuation of your rules dependent on these following and following these directives, Minister Rolf Steiner. Consider it done, Minister. So right now, currently, okay, so I basically replayed this and set it up so that, <clears throat> remember yesterday, or the last video, we actually got uh, the world of business here, in which we got, no, 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 it was this guy. We got the tycoon, and Ernst von Siemens was here. Well, I decided to go back and not choose him, because I wanted extra political power, so that's why we could spend political power to get financiers or investors to finance a civil industry and which now we're looking still we have 10 out of 20 which is actually pretty darn awesome and of course our economy is doing very very well as well but we haven't done that one yet and we actually kind of read that and the benefits are okay i kind of don't mind it we're still buying stuff too which is nice um so i've gone back and i did the congo lake training and now we're going to do the kudu again if it fails i tried it like 20 times off screen yesterday but if it fails again i'm going to go back and try it again maybe I hope it'll go okay, but we'll see what happens. Now, the investors are content right now. And actually, because I redid this, the Belgians, the French, the Angles are all happy with us. And the native tension, well, it's kind of high too, so we might want to lower that for now. Status quo. Good enough. And which, even though we could do uh, the Tycoon again, I might do someone else like the planner. Get Edmund Geilenberg, or maybe the the uh, the dude who probably whips people who work involuntarily. Which sounds like a lot of fun, but the equipment... So, we'll read this, maybe. And the hunting spot as well. Oh, wait, no, it's all about it. Cool, so just in case, just to show you guys this, that, like, I often have to save in TNO. Or go back or even replay things because I don't save. So, if we don't succeed this time, it is what it is. But up next, we shall go... And I did ask you guys yesterday whether we should do our airfields or working with Super Vast Africa. And right now, at the time of this recording, there's more support for... Our very own field, airfields, because as someone did leave in the comments, it wouldn't make sense for Mueller to b clear the jungle, which could hurt his hunt. Because we love hunting here. So, uh, we will go down this way and please the investors, increase exploitation. But the most important thing to do right now is to maximize this and getting through the animal stuff before the South African War begins, in which we will go through with, I think, our friend next door. Um, yeah, I think, we don't think we did this one yesterday. So, Shank, Mueller's southern colleague. As a veteran just like him, surely he'll appreciate a good hunt. The last one together in 58 ended up in their helicopter intercepting a local revolt, which they immediately suppressed by themselves, but ever since then, Shank's attitude towards Müller has grown colder. Still, years have passed since the last hunting accident, and the Reichskommissar is sure that whatever had made Shank upset has passed. And if it hasn't, then a good hunt exactly what he needs to release some stress. So, actually, I do want to see this, because we did see this yesterday as well. So it's 55%, which is pretty nice, but every time I did it, like, off-screen yesterday, it just... It would say zero, or it just wouldn't work, so that really sucks. Um, Lower Chad, actually I did both of these before. The Lower Chad gives you better success, which is nice. Old and Reliable, Modern and Swift. Uh, I think Old and Reliable might have been better. The Hunt is ready. If you want to read about this, please go right ahead. And we're going to buy some more resources as well. And then we're going to do that and help our GDP. Thank you. And if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Uh, take it down. No, no, no. It's better to do keep high to surprise him. And we're at 68% and perfect occasion. He shot... Ah, oh, we didn't miss it, but I'm going to do it again, like, probably 20 times to see if we can get it and be successful at this. All right, everyone, so I looked on the Reddit, and I'm looking for, around for guides, and apparently other people have had the same issue. No matter what happens, you just can't be successful. Now, maybe if you guys try this yourselves, maybe you guys can be, but at 68%, I think is the highest amount you can get. You want to take modern weapons, you want to take hunt and load shad, um, and you want to go high. You don't want to get low near them. You want to go high, because that gives you the highest percentage, but I think it's bugged where you always end up not being able to kill it, which really, really sucks. So, 
I want to say it's bugged. I, I don't know exactly if it is or not, but if you like me about that, please go ahead. It, it, it just sucks. It really does suck, because I've tried this like 30 times off screen. But I'm sure Central Africa, while we love Central Africa and its hunting seasons and such like that. Oh, can we try it again? Oh, maybe we'll try that again, but we'll probably fail. But, <clears throat> I'm sure that this is not high on the devs list for fixing, if if it's anything like that. So we can try it again, but we only have so much pee, -pee here, so... Let's go ahead, and we're going to try to get internal situations. No, status quo. Everyone's kind of okay. Let's go try to get the slaver. I think getting the slaver will be nice. We're still doing our next door neighbor as well. But after that, we're going to go through the jungle, the noble lion. Uh, let's do the noble lion, actually. Ah, the lion. An animal worth a thousand legends and more. There can be no true safari without a lion hunt. The danger, the thrill, the roars. It's enough to make even the most seasoned hunter tremble in excitement like a child before his birthday. Ever since the ancient times, hunting a lion has been a feast or feat. For the bravest men. And there's the king out there. Other than uh, Koenigste. Or Koenig's Tiger. That's the line. And it'll be a centerpiece in the Rijkskommissar's new trophy room. Let's hope it actually works this time. Because if it doesn't, we're going to be mighty sad. But let's get the slaver. Try out the slaver. See what the slaver's done. Dalma Benz Magnet Friedrich Flick. It's one of the most dangerous men in Germany. Connected to the SS and notoriously indifferent on the working conditions of his slaves. Perhaps he'll benefit from a trip to the Hitlerstadt. Let's hope so. Diamond Conveying Mission. Mining in the Congo is primarily conducted by three corporations, BCK, UMHK, and the uh, Foreign Minere. However, one true force dominates above all others, violence. From forcibly conscripted labor to the heckish working conditions and the scars on the earth which the mines leave behind, danger abounds and no one escapes unharmed. But the most dangerous job of all is transporting products all along the colony's rickety jun jungle roads to the ports of the Congo Mare. Considering the staggering number of mercenaries employed as guards and overseers, these trips can often turn into firefights as the three leading companies license their men engage in a bloody form of cutthroat competition, while paying us to look the other way. <clears throat> for critical missions, like moving uranium, the state will provide airlift or SS troops, but in all other circumstances, companies will have to pay for the privilege of hiring out security. Private wars demand private armies, but there's nothing stopping us from making a quick buck on, on the side as a middleman. To that end, Fulminere has just requested we provide security for an upcoming diamond convoy from Kasai, and we're kind enough to afford a rather large insurance copyment. All the major mercenaries have permanent contracts with one firm or the other, so we'll have to turn to more minor outfits to meet their demands. Bob Dennard, a major Fulminere contractor, has recommended that eager French officer Philippe Erulin and his group of paid troopers experience an unconventional warfare. Then there's Duck Vandalin, <laughs> a relative newcomer who has recently crossed the border from South Africa to enter the business. He already has made quite a name for himself for his bravery in combat, and his this mission could be his big break. Finally, there's a more conservative Pat Smith, the by, a by-the-books, if uncreative officer we've long employed to train our local troops, and who has always proven capable in following his orders to a T. The paratrooper? The Belgians will be unhappy, which, well, the Belgians are never happy. Never, ever happy. Uh, the duck, the daredevil, no one's gonna happy, except for the Belgians, and Smith the stalwart. The Belgians. Well, the Belgians are pissed off at everything, so... I'd rather piss off one group than anyone else, so... We don't have a lot of PP. Manpower defense. Recon. I kind of want to do the paratrooper. That sounds actually a lot of fun. Let's go paratrooping. And they're still currently reliable, so that's still okay. Diamond Convoy Mission, Erlen's Report. In concert with the secret intelligence from Denner, Captain Philippe, or Philip Erlen, Erulin devised a strategy he called Le Troyen, which consisted of positioning most of the small band of heavily armed men in unremarkable trucks masquerading as part of the Forminary convoy. At each mine, he had the cargo trucks pick up crates of blasting explosives rather than diamonds. Finally, on some dusty road, the long awaited ambush arrived as two men, armed men, ran into the path of the Lee truck. They demanded the driver stop, and he meekly complied, exiting his vehicle with his hands above his head. As one man and led the captured driver towards the jungle, a group of mercs left their position in the tree line to search the truck bed and capture the rest of the convoy. Once enough of them were enough, ugh, my apologies for my mispronunciations. Once enough of them were near, Erlin triggered the explosives in the back of the now empty lead truck as his men poured out of their vehicles, launching a counter ambush of their own. <clears throat> In a few minutes, the robbery devolved into a rout. Erlin ordered his men to slacken their fire. These were fellow mercs, after all. Besides, he needed his opponents alive for his plan to come to fruition. It worked brilliantly as word spread like brush fire that Forminere was booby-trapping its trucks. The psychological damage far outstripped the losses that Erlin had inflicted on the BCK and UHMK. 
Fulminere got its convoy through and then the next five, and within a few months felt confident enough to actually start running convoys without escorts. Fear alone has become the deterrent. Ironically, it seems like the threat of extreme violence may be what finally put an end to the merc endless mercenary raids. This could never be allowed to stand, of course. The idea of the companies reaping all the Congo's vast profits for themselves without paying for protection? Impossible. Steiner sent their telegrams to himself to observers in Germania. They seem to be innocuous. Uh... Uh, innocuous customs regulations on the private movement of the blasting explosives. To the companies on the ground, they suddenly made the, the Troyan approach cost prohibitive. Within a few days, the ambush rate and funding for the government uh, had spiked to unprecedented levels. Sometimes the market needs a helping hand. Cool, so we did the British, I think, last time. Did we? Or the French? No, we had the French last time. And this group was... Maybe French as well. I don't remember. Ah, eh, whatever. It doesn't really matter too much. At least as far as I can tell, it doesn't seem to matter too much, but all I care about is buying more goods from Germany, because we love Germania here. Nice. 15 billion in GDP? Yes, please. Friedrich Flick arrives in Leopoldville, and the noble lion. Ah, uh, things were not off to a great start, thought Flick, as a plane finally parked. The flight was late, and it was still long. He was just thankful the aircraft had made it to Zentro Africa at all. From what he heard, many planes had disappeared into the giant lake in the middle of the Congo. Stepping out, he could see the sparse tarmac at the Leopoldville airport. A few commercial planes were there, as well as a few helicopters and occasional private jet, but not like many of the other airports of the pack, especially the ones in Germany, which were, were far busier. He noticed a reception party, a group of flunkies. And the Rex Commissar, what's his name? They're trying to greet him, like so many others. He gave a sm them a small gesture of greeting. That's all they would get in return. He didn't care about formality or any fancy procedure. He just wanted to see if they got him what he wanted. And there it was. A private car. Wunderbar. Perhaps Africa was not full of arrogant backwaters failures as he heard. Then there might even be a few who could follow orders all the time. He walked towards it, ignoring the reception, while a few porters carried his bags from the modest aircraft he arrived in. The keys were in the ignition, just like he told them to. He popped the trunk so his bags could be packed. Once that was done, he turned on the motor. Well, not everything was perfect. He would have to get some petrol before he went to Hitlerstadt, he felt, as he drove away from the meeting place, and the Reichskommissar, who was still trying to get his attention. We might have made a mistake. But a formal invitation before Reichskommissar Schenk. Reichskommissar Müller had begun to wrap his head around how large Africa was, but he still couldn't figure out where the endless paperwork his underlings labored under came from. This was of little concern to the man. Tons of resources came out for the fatherland, while tons of cash came in from every corner of the world. As long as things went swimmingly, the Reichskommissar felt it would be a crime not to enjoy his status as much as he could. My apologies. Still, the naturally gregarious Müller felt a bit isolated in his position. His only company was an endless rotating cast of bureaucrats and foreign businessmen that desired nothing more than to get their job done and then to leave Africa, of course. He had met some fun people in the Sudwest Africa, but even the fun people couldn't free themselves all the time for the Reichskommissar's hunting expeditions. Müller was thus perpetually on an outlook for new friends and company as he went on his hunting expeditions. This was at the heart of his new project to look abroad for new hunting partners. Rex Kumasar Wolfgang Schenk of Sudwest Africa was a strangely serious and melancholy man, but he too seemed to share in Müller's disdain for the drudgery bureaucracy. The flying ace could often be found in the skies above Africa, surveying his domain like Jupiter atop Mount Olympus. Rex Kumasar Müller reckoned that the flying ace might be interested in tagging along on a hunting excursion. Besides, wasn't personal diplomacy between Rex Kumasar crucial to the African mission? Müller was sure he could write this off as a business expense somewhere. Fetch me my typewriter. And we'll do it through the jungle. The jungle covering most of Zentro Africa are surely filled with wild game, or so the Rex Commissar thinks. He has mounted an expedition to chart the wild areas still untouched by man, or more precisely by his helicopter, to find out even more abundant and potential prey. Cleverly, for once, he managed to convince a businessman to pay everything by having a couple prospectors following the cartographers. Should any new ore or diamond vein be, be discovered, the rights to exploit them will be very lucrative indeed. I think I read this one last time, my apologies. Wolfgang accepts their invitation because he's forced to. After a breakfast of bread rolls, coffee, and a boiled egg, Müller stepped into his office to do the morning's work. Work usually entailed him going through what ended up on his desk, responding to the most important parts, and sending the rest of it to the subordinates who were supposed to handle it. Usually there was a person who would analyze it for him, but sometimes they sent it on because they didn't know where it should go. Perhaps the Rex Commissar would put another person above the first person to move the, tax, to move the tasks the first person missed. To his dismay, it seemed that somebody had dumped a larger number of documents than usual into his inbox that night. Miller sighed and began to work. A few budgetary requests, memos that should have stopped a level or two beneath him, a cooling system maintenance bell for a nearby building, some fan mail that he got some for some strange reason, and a telegram from, why wasn't this on the top? Rex Commissar Schenk thanks you for your thoughtfulness and is honored to join you for the hunting excursion that Rex Commissar Müller has invited him to. Müller knew what this meant. Without all the fancy wordplay BS that in it that Rex Commissars had to put in to feel self-important. Schenk was coming and he was bringing guns. Now he couldn't work. There were extremely important arrangements to be made. Ones that couldn't be trusted to a director or secretary. Heck yeah, Wolfgang. Wolfgang, Wolfgang. 
Uh, we still want to raise our reliability, but Friedrich Flick's vacation Hitler Hitlerstadt. Oh, look at that. What a disgusting place, thought Flick, as he boarded his modest aircraft to be taken back to Germany. The resort was fine, standard even. One could even find a place like that in many of the areas of the Reich. But those hotels would make use of the local populace, while this one would not. The servers, the housekeeping, the clerks, the bailhops, the doormen, all were white. Even the gardener was white. The only natives here he saw in Hitlerstadt were outside the facility, free to do whatever they were doing. This outraged him to no end. These impoverished natives were defecating, copulating, living in squalor all over this wretched colony, and the resort still insisted on importing German or Belgian labor and making them do menial tasks? Who approved this? If it were up to him, these tasks would be assigned to the races who were best to handle them. It would be easier and a lot cheaper too, and I want to thank the developers for writing it in a certain way so we don't get demonetized. And that Reichskommissar Müller, what was the problem with him? Never business, like always pestering Flick and getting him to go somewhere, usually an expedition to hunt in the middle of a godforsaken jungle. Well... At least the pestering died down after a few days, not that that helped the business very much. It was a poor place, he decided. One that he would have certainly complained about to his friends in the SS and NSDAP. And so left Friedrich Fleck. Or Fleck. A man who would leave behind a unique legacy in Central Africa, one not shared anywhere else in the Reich. For he would go down as a man who was so personally disagreeable, even the sociable Sigrid Müller hated to talk to him. He would not be missed when his plane left the ground, and Central Africa was eager to place a more appreciative and friendly guest in the Hitler shot result. Good riddance. So that kind of sucked. Okay, so actually... Well, I'm glad we learned about his story. We saw about the Tycoon. The Tycoon's so much better to do than the Slaver. Obviously, he's a Slaver, so it's obviously not good probably to bring him down, but it is what it is. Ah. Cool. The equipment for the Lion. Um, I think this is the same, probably. Uh, well, let's see. The onlooker's eye. Maybe found some joy in it. Well... Uh, I guess I'll release one of these. Müller entered his personal armory. Now that he knew where he was going, he wanted to choose his equipment. This was one of the quintessential parts of the hunt, though boring to the onlookers. I, Müller, found some joy in it. Yeah, okay, this is exactly the same thing, so. Hmm. He wanted to hang his lying head on his trophy. <clears throat> I think we'll read this one, though, because this is slightly different. Müller was relaxing after his near-daily morning exercises while tormenting himself mentally and physically earlier on. He took a hold of a notion that didn't stop bugging him since. He wanted to hang a lion's head onto his trophy collection, such a noble and famous beast Mark was still considerably lacking in his hall. It was one of the most famous and legendary predators in all of Africa, known in every, nearly every place around the world. In his office, he pondered over the map where every mark his scouts had made were centralized for posterity. He swiftly identified the two spots he preferred for the plentifulness of the animal. He had to choose. On the one hand, there would be the Batikala... Oh, Batakala Plateau, just slightly northwest of Leopoldville. It would be a strange flight, though a population thinned down ever since the last van lands there boasted every kind of savanna natured animal, famously the lion amongst them. It made for the animals preferred terrain and thus for a great hunting spot. On the other hand, his choice fell on the Varunga region, a flight to the north that would lead along the Congo Lake beyond the Varunga Mountains, eight volcanoes, the savanna like flatland park. Pa popularly hosted a wide array of lions. He now had to choose where he would go find the most impressive game and where he had the most luck with the noble lions, which we're going to save just in case if this doesn't go, or this goes exactly like the kudu. Hmm. It would be a straight flight. Even though the population is lower, they boasted every kind of animal, famously the lion, or the virunga, well, lead along the Congo Lake. Eight volcanoes popularly hosted a wide array. Hmm, wait, beyond the eight volcanoes, the, the savannah-like flatland popularly hosted. Well, mythical violence we shoot? Uh, actually, let's take a look here, because I want to make sure, well, do we have the thing open? That's so weird, this came up here, why? Well, I guess we'll go with this one. Oh, oh wow, maybe that was wrong. I'll go modern and swift for this one. Oh boy. Uh, Hunter's ready, if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Sound the horn, we're coming? Cool. This does not look good. Going to the savannah. Um. Well, I'll read this one. We're closing in, Rex Commissar. Finally, the pilot's words saved him from the completely drifting into the heaven of hunts. Excitedly, he grabbed for the supporting bars and positioned himself on the sky skids. Windy air blowing across his face. Below, he saw that they were crossing a wide river with a swift current, offering a reflection of the helicopter. Beyond the river, they surmounted a minor range of mountains covered in healthy green. The helicopter soared. Ahead were the Varunga Mountains, eight impressed volcanoes surrounded by the 
light morning mist, immediately triggering mystical fantasies in Miller's mind, one was higher than the other. Besides, they stretched for miles in either direction. Rocky formations of Earth suggested they were intended as steep pathways to reach the mountains, but Miller knew that's how volcanoes were supposed to look. The volcano's ascents were overgrown with jungle trees. Those spots of then in other jungle ranges, all eight volcanoes appeared in a mighty green, steadily rounding up into the top of their clouded peaks. The lower levels of these beautifully shaped mountains with their mysterious pathways and thicker undergrowth obviously made for the better hunting spots. One of his companions joined him on the skids, shouting despite the noise. How do you want to proceed? Do you seem to have gathered the essential details about the spot by now? The lions are obviously in the grassland. A fine question, to be sure. Should they fly lower for a closer look, or will that give away the element of surprise? Keep hide to surprise them? Might as well. Okay, maybe that was the wrong one to do. And if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Um, this is basically the exact same thing as last time, so he shot and probably missed. Never mind, we got it at 47%. Nice. And let's keep boosting this stuff up, too, because we can. That's awesome, actually. The bullet hit the lion's neck, splattering blood on the beautifully colored mane. It would silently collapse as if Kingdom Comf suddenly decided this lion shouldn't have live any longer. Muller shat on superstitious nonsense. He'd killed the lion as graciously as it had lived. Though two of the female lions took to the flight, one remained like if it was bound to the male for all time. It was certainly after his companions penetrated the mane less female with numerous shots, splattering guts and brain everywhere. Fortunately, he didn't besmirch his prime prize. He didn't care for the female as long as his male was untouched. That can be taken out of context very carefully. They approached the dead animals on the ground. Step after step, Muller's grin widened. He was happy beyond belief. He had slain some female lions and merely one male lion before, but not such a ferocious, glorious one. Gladly, this particularly rare specimen's great mane and head were about to embellish the halls of his palace and bestow it upon it a predator's ferocity and feral nobleness his collection still lacked. Merely quickly took hold of the mane, making sure it wasn't dusted by sand or anything. Now he descended on the beast, cutting down the last boundary that separated Muller from his trophy. He just... Couldn't wait. Do we have it? No, we don't have it yet. Oh, that's, that's actually... I'm glad we got it. In the palace. There was perfectly in place the equally beautiful, ferocious, noble, majestic main fit that excellency. Excellently. Muller was overexcited to have visitors gaze onto the grandeur that his collection now boasted thanks to his lion's head. Noble and stalwart. The grand collection, still in early development, had the head of a noble king of the African wildlife complete, uh, complemented each other flawlessly. The lions had promised to impress each and every visitor Muller hosted. Besides, it was promised to draw attention from anyone who'd hear about Muller slaying a grand lion, and he'd make sure everyone knew of it. He looked at the positioning of the head, perfectly placed in the center as a, as a collection's new crown jewel. The Rex Comus crossed his arms and proudly contemplated his work. It's slain this beast. What a story to tell. No one could flee it now with the awe-inspiring lion's head being the anarchation incarnation of a hunting tale worth to tell. The imposing look let the Rex Commissar drift into a hunter's fantasy, already imagining a complete trophy collection soon, soon, soon. Hey, that's, oh, now that's cool. I'm disappointed in the a little bit of the mod that we couldn't get the kudu. That's actually really awesome. Poor lion. Poor guy, but the Itombwe Mountains. Muller's maps were never the tidy wrapped of up affairs that Africa as, as expected of the officers. Symbols and scrolling words spilled the map and onto the desk was laid upon with pictures of animals, most of them dependent on whichever species Muller had recently taken a liking to, pasted across the map and on strategic hunting regions. Various military commanders had complained early in the colony's history that it made strategic planning sessions with the Rex Commissar useless, but thankfully their insubordination had earned them a quick trip to the parts of the Congo where few returned alive, if at all. To send out a way of dying down and exile to the mosquito coast, of the Congo was a quick alternative to actual change. Now Muller poured over his most recent map, trying to decide which would be preferable for his ends. He looked at the map, <clears throat> at the terrain, bringing it to memory with his previous hunts and the conditions he's braved. Since Shink was a newcomer to this, the tougher grounds were out of the question, especially the parts of the Congo where tribes host hostile to the Reich, had armed themselves and closed themselves off to the world. And the areas near Mosquito Coast were definitely out of the question, no matter how tempting the idea of shooting a few dissidents was. Muller found his gaze drawn towards the Itombwe Mountains, Plateau and Low Mountains, perfect for aerial surveillance and hunting, and the natives weren't uppity enough to justify killing. It sounded perfect to Muller, and as he barked in order to his aides to print an enlarged map of the Itombwe region, his mind was already off in excitement of the hunt. Intrigue in the mountains. Nice. That's when becomes that guy? Cool. We, I definitely want to try that maybe again sometime, but I'd rather do that when we have a save going, so. Alright, we want to make sure the Belgians are not completely pissed off at us, and now they're trustworthy. We have enough equipment except for anti tank. Not bad. Not bad. And we definitely want to do the stuff next. But once we get more money. And then we'll do the gorilla. Oh, to prepare the hunt. Yeah, I'll do the hunt. For, well, let's do the gorilla first. I'll get through all the animals for ourselves. If, as learned by 
as as some learned learned men think. Men have evolved from monkeys, and surely gorillas are the most dangerous prey one can face. Being the almost perfect union between beast and man, taller than any man, and strong enough to break a lion in two. They live in organized packs and possess an almost human cunning, being able to even throw rocks at Mueller's helicopter. Many hunters have found a gru gruesome end at their hands. Still, that's what makes it all the more enticing to hunt them. Facing our ancestors and proving the superiority of our mind and its products, especially helicopters and rifles, over raw instinct and strength, heart of darkness. Fell Marie, Lieutenant Lutnant, Lieutenant. Hans Klein chuckled to himself as the sentries walked away. Yes, a simple roadmap. Made by a commanding officer so low in the chain of command, he was basically a janitor. Truly, the fools he commanded deserved the rank. They'd never rise above and see the true worthlessness of their position. Trapped in a heck hole that swallowed his higher-born peers every week and left their bodies to rot far from home, they deserved every second of the jungle. Not Hans Klein, though. Klein had better ideas in mind. And he had all he needed to get there. The rifle had been easy enough to procure from Mueller's guardsmen, they'd been almost eager to get rid of it. Perhaps the weight of guarding the Hunter of Africa had finally given, driven them insane altogether. Their special gear he procured through his shaving a little here and a little there off his own stores. Had taken far more time, however. Thank goodness he'd been in charge of the survival equipment and defense gear storage. He'd stuff enough useless junk into military stores that they'd take a month to notice it was gone. A few days trekking in his mobile jeep, the driver had been so low paid he jumped at the chance to be divested of his job. And Klein reached a place where his dreams could be brought to life. A nameless village noted on a few surveillance maps and dismissed as worthless. Klein smiled as the natives approached him. He fired his big gun into the air. This was where Conrad said the natives would be would fall before in fear. And then there was nothing. The gun was sunk, the ammo a dud. The only mercy Hans Klein was given, and the hours before his death, was that he was in far, far too much pain to regret his actions. He got what he deserved. Oh boy. But we want to do the gorilla. Gorilla time. Gorilla mama. What gorilla mama? Hmm... Gorilla, da gorilla Daddy. Charting a good jungle hunting spots. Robert was hiding in the thick rooting of one of the huge jungle trees. Rain was pressing down on him even though the thick layers of these gosh darn trees. Uh, through these. The noise of it rippling the nearby stream hampered his ability to make out the sound of the animal, but he was certain he had found it a mighty gorilla. An impressive monster. He quickly marked it on the map as ordered and scuttled it away. The mercer didn't like to be here and didn't want to be here. He was here paid to be here. He knew he and his followers were the best for the job because they were paid to make sense of the jungle. He didn't question when Siegfried Müller had sent him here, since he, he paid considerably well and promised bonuses for the success. Their task was simple. He wanted them to find the most impressive animals in Africa's jungles to potentially hunt them. This would be something even Robert might enjoy. Squadrons of helicopters took off from the Reichskommissar's palace to disseminate above the jungle. Tiny helicopters, so tiny that three men barely fit into it, barring the pilot. Each was stacked with two or three mercenaries from the hand-chosen commandos, experienced in the unforgiving terrain of the jungle. They were paid to mark Africa's best spots to hunt the jungle wildlife. The helicopter landed on a plateau at night ago. Each mercenary went off for themselves to find the biggest and most brutish beast to mark the spots that promised the, mon the most money and bonuses. Every one of his companies, or ha having arrived on the plateau, they flew off to the Rocks Commissar for a report again. Back there, nobody asked about each other's successes, not even in their own units. Nobody asked but for the Rikes Commissar. Nice. Uh, we got we got quite good trucks. It is 63. How's land auction coming along? Well, we can't add any more to it right now. We can probably grab some of that too. That's not a bad idea. And make sure we got the best trucks. It's Africa. We need better trucks. We will never get have good enough trucks. But it is what it is. Hopefully we just get enough steel. That's my worry. We don't have enough. And currently we're at minus two. Actually, we will hopefully have enough soon, actually. And hopefully enough for over two. Gorilla. And the Great Buffalo. The buffalo is a strong and powerful animal capable of killing anyone with its horns or trampling even a car when charging. While herbivorous, it's a difficult prey and precipent. Hunters have been surprised by its sharp reactions, ending up as prey rather than predator. Of course, that won't scare the Rex Commissar, just to be sure he'll shoot from atop his helicopter. It feels a bit like the Roman Emperor Commodus, who hunted beasts in the arena from the top of the platform, but if that's how he gets his fun... Oh, we don't meet the requirements? Oh, it's because all other hunting should be over. Well, you know what? Like before, I'm sorry, but I'm just going to save a lot. Like, we've got to save a lot just to make sure we do as best we can, so. The hunting spot. The equipment. Um, old equipment, modern equipment. Uh, yeah, this is the exact same reading. Old equipment, do the marvel. Well, let's take a look. Where is our hunting stuff? 70% chance. Cool. The gorilla, the hunting spot. Mueller was in a good mood today, with a wider grin than usual before hopping out of his bed. He was flushed with overexcitement at the thought of hunting a big, brutish gorilla. It was one of those classic African animals, but he wanted a trophy of it in his palace. A monstrous gorilla head would make his trophy room just much more impressive. In his office, he pondered over the map where every mark 
his scouts made were centralized for posterity. He swiftly identified the two spots he preferred for the plentifulness of the animal. He had to choose which one, though. On the one hand, there were the Etombwe Mountains. It would be a straight flight there. Those mountains were not too far from the nominal border of Rex Commissar Ost Africa, or Rex Commissariat Ost Africa, and made for the breeding ground of some of those famed highland as well as the green savanna hunting spots in the dales, it was said. On the other hand, uh, his choice fell on the Virunga Mountains, located slightly to the north, a flight that would lead along the coast of the Congo Lake for some time. But its eight volcanoes already made for a hunting story worth to tell in Mueller's mind. He now had to choose where he would find the most impressive game and where he would have the most luck with the gigantic gorillas. An uncomplicated fight to the Mbabwe in Tomboy Mountains. Yes. Oh, that actually was worse. Well, oh well. And equipment. And I'll do the modern ones. And I went back up a little bit. Cool. Uh, the hunt is ready. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. And actually, I'm not going to do the next focus until we get this one. Cumry, Cumry, Cock, Croc, I don't know, I don't know Welsh, man. And the gorilla going to the mountains. i uh, prepare to shoot from up here. Uh, a lighter landing spot. Uh, let's see, this one's pretty normal. Uh, uh, the helicopter soared ahead with a range of highlands thickly covered by vegetation. The jungle canopy forbade any direct view on the ground, especially with the motion blur. Up and down the landscape went. Minor dales marred the mountainous view from becoming a somewhat equally high and endless plateau. Mueller enjoyed following the rising and sinking lines of the canopy far beyond the most immense ranges of the highland. He spotted the thicket of the jungle ending disturbingly abrupt, giving way to grassy mounds again, but they weren't here for that. One of the companions joined him on the skids, saying that, do you want to go high or do you want to go low, basically. Soon we've gathered such views about, about the spot by now, the gorillas are surely somewhere amidst the thickest covert. A fine question to be sure, would it be a wise hunt the dangerously vigorous animal from the ground, or but rather safely but aggravated by the jungle canopy from the air? Search for a lighter landing spot. 79%? Anybody want to read about that? Uh, no, uh, I'm going to do this one. The crosshairs becoming an extension of his eyeball like normal. A beautiful enormous back of a large male gorilla. He was slightly adjusting to his right carefully as to not lose the original target, but then to the left. He slowly searched for the other targets, but there were none. This one had to be sufficient, and its monstrosity surely accommodated for its needs of Mueller's trophy room. Now was the moment he aimed to the wide back again. The gorilla wasn't moving, just sitting there perfect. We got it. The bullet directly penetrated the gorilla's neck. Beautiful. Just as intended, the brute collapsed in an instant, still lying for several seconds, until it started flinching uncontrollably just in the vicinity of Mueller's ear. Another shot was fired, cracking the beast's enormous back from behind. Whether it had been alive or before, it was uh, before, or whether it was a neural excess low, the black brute was surely dead by now. They approached the dead animal on the ground. Step after step, Mueller's grin widened, barely a meter apart from it. it sh he shook one of the hunting companions by the shoulder and shrieked how he had missed this feeling of overexcitement. He never had slain such a brutish adult gorilla before, and this particularly brutish specimen's head was about to adorn the halls of his palace, and bestow upon it the menacing yet tranquil impression the gorilla had radiated. Mueller quickly took hold of the senses again. He tried to lift it upright, but had to laugh at its enormity. Instead, they rolled it over in cadence and descended upon it like vultures for the final work of the day. Thus, the cutting and stowing began. Oh boy. And we hope we get the last event. Ah, in the palace. There it was, perfectly in place. The big brute just fit there, yet Mueller couldn't exactly tell what particularly made it impressive. It just was. The grand collection, still in its shabby early stages, and such an enormous beast's head complemented each other flawlessly. The gorilla's skull, looking menacingly toned towards the palace's visitors, certainly offered uh, for, uh, for a scared visitor once in a while. Mueller liked it. He looked at the positioning of the head and thanked for the concierge's concierge efforts to put it up there. The Rex Commissar crossed his arms and proudly contemplated his work. He'd slain the beast. Well, that, well, that's a story to tell. No one could flee it now with the big gorilla's head being the story's, story's sentinel. The fierce look reminded him of how many Africa's impressions while once adorned this, this palace. It couldn't wait to expand it. Cool. And the great buffalo. And the mighty elephant. Elephants are a strength of nature, as large as a small building and capable of trampling even a light tank with their strength. These beasts can resist even several bullets with their endurance and thick skins. Still, Mueller has several high-piercing explosive rounds at his disposal that'll make sure it work up even the most stubborn of these proud animals. Their horns will make a fine trophy if you manage to engrave them with the history of our triumphs, of course, though. So. <clears throat> um, we'll probably go modern and swift. For the equipment. For, if you want to read about the buffalo, please go ahead, but modern and swift, the hunting spots. The Rex Commissar was sipping one of his specially icy cold lemonade drinks when determination took hold of him. He wanted to expand his trophy collection, which had not aged well as well as he had down here. A buffalo would be his next target, an animal whose weirdly shaped horns always made for a not 
Naughty laugh in his mind. It was a typical African savanna animal, but most importantly, it was heavy by nature and its horns were impressive nonetheless. In his office, he pondered over the map where every mark in his scouts his scouts had made were centralized for posterity. He swiftly identified the two spots he preferred for the plentifulness of the animal. He had to choose on the one hand. His choice fell on the Bas Uea, a vast savanna that was a patch of grass and steppe. Far to the northeast of the Congo Lake, the long flight might pay off with a broad plentifulness of the animal. The savannah there made for its perfect breeding ground. On the other hand, his choice fell on the Lekusala province, or Lekuala province. Located to the northwest of the Congo Lake, a flight that would lead along its shores. It was a rather swampy region that was known to be inhabited by a particular species of buffalo. Uh, now we had to choose which we would, where he would find the most impressive game and where he would have the most luck with the great buffaloes. Who might pay off with the raw plentifulness. Perfect breeding grounds? We want the breeding, breeding grounds. Yep, 79%. Good, good, good. And the hunt is ready. If you want to know about that, please go right ahead. Yep, pretty much. The hunt is on. Going to the mountains. The helicopter soared ahead was Bas Uel. On one side lay hills covered in grass and with clusters of trees filling in the valleys, snaking along creeks and rivers yet unknown. On the other side was miles upon miles of uninterrupted jungle, thick and lush, concealing the ground from view from the air. Almost anything could be found in these regions, and that's what made him so attractive for today's hunt. One of his companions joined him on the skids again, shouting despite the noise, how do you want to proceed? You seem to have gathered the essential details about the spot by now. The buffalo should be in those riverbanks. A fine question, to be sure. Should they fly over low for a close look, or without give away the element surprise? Keep high. Oh, I guess not. Keep low. And? Uh-oh. Well, that's not good. Come on. We didn't say it this time, though. We got it. The bullet hit the buffalo's breast in an ensuing feast of blood and gore. The beast wasn't failed immediately, still pumping veins in the chest, splattering the whole pond, turning it dark red in an instant. The buffalo fought and wriggled uncontrollably, making the impression it was ruptured by a wild predator. Just in the vicinity of Muller's ear, another shot was fired. Swiftly pursued by another one, he himself shot, and shot again as well, delivering the ultimate blow. The bystanding buffaloes were all gone by then, one limping in the distance from one of his companion's shots. They approached the dead animal on the ground, step after step. Muller's grin widened. Uh, barely a meter apart from it, it cluelessly shot in the air as a hobbinger of his overexcitement. He hadn't seen a big buffalo for a long time, and this was particularly rare specimens. Gargantuan horns were about to adorn the halls of his palace and bestow upon it the beautiful, impressive appearance his grand collection still lacked. He quickly took hold of his senses again. He tried to pull it out of the water, but he had to give up on that instead. They let it rest in the water, for they only wanted the special trophy. Let another predator take the meat. And we love meat. In the palace, there it was, perfectly in place. The equally beautiful and impressively shaped horns there fit excellence. excellently, yet Muller still grinned at how awkward they stood on any buffalo's head. Funny yet powerful, the grand collection still in its shabby early stages and a skull adorned with such noble horns complemented each other flawlessly. The buffaloes had promised to be any visitor's favorite uh, from a far distance. Muller liked it. He looked at the positioning of the head and took another sip of his drink. The Rex Commissar crossed his arms and proudly contemplated his work. It's slain the beast. What a story to tell. Um... Yes, I think it's already read this one, so it was far from being finished. And it's time for the Mighty Elephant. We might do the Kudu Hunt again. We'll see what happens. Oh, tensions are high. Oh, higher native mercenaries. Eh, lower. Eh, we can watch some more stability with NASA, but so are the natives. Why not? Status quo. That's fine with us. And let's go do this stuff again. Nice. Because we always have more money to spare then. What's not to love? And then we'll do the numerous topi. Among the various antelope species, the topi, or tapai, possesses the highest degree of socialization, often moving in large packs and finding safety in numbers, with several members acting as sentinels for, for the other predators. As all things, as all other herbivores, they prefer to flee rather than fighting. It's highly unlikely, however, that their sentinels can prevent them from being sniped from a helicopter. Well, we'll have to wait and see here, of course. But I don't remember when the South African War begins. It's actually, South African Wars begins after the German Civil War, so I just want to get through this stuff, you know, as best as possible, so we'll see what happens. We'll go with Modern Swift, probably. D yeah, we want elephant guns, probably, to take out elephants. Well, that's why they call them elephant guns, so. You'd think so. Modern Swift. In the hunting spot. Uh, uh, yeah, we're getting there. The Rex Commissar was standing in front of his trophy collection, standing in front of what he had achieved so far. Looking at the central part of it, he saw what he accomplished over the last weeks and months. Not as much in the years prior, but he was certain he could shame his past self by completely indulging into hunting for the next weeks as well. One animal predominantly 
A prominently missing the whole of his collection, he had shot only slain one of their kind, they were too robust, but he was confident this time he had hunted an elephant. In his office, he pondered over the map where every mark his scouts had made were centralized for posterity. He swiftly identified two spots he preferred for the plentifulness of the animal he had to choose on one hand. There was the northeastern bank of the Congo Lake which hosted a great range of savanna animals. It was one of the greener places of the usually believed to be dusty savannas. The grassy savanna near the lake, recently trimmed from thick canopies, could make for excellent hunting spot, maybe with a comfortable layover in Hellerstadt. On the other hand, his choice fell on the Bas Ule again. A vast savanna that was a patchwork of grass and steppe, far to the northeast of the Congo Lake. This long fly flight might pay off with a broad plentifulness of the animal. The savanna there made for its perfect breeding ground. And now basically he would have to choose again. Breeding ground? Well, breeding grounds are bad to do. Okay, the hunt is ready. Nice. Oh yeah, I guess everything was ready. The Rex Commissar rubbed his hands at the thought of slaying a mighty elephant soon. He pictured it right in front of him aiming at the gargantuan beast and directly hitting it through its heart, and finally hanging in the head of the biggest terrestrial mammal. A lot of these, I can't even tell sometimes, they look all the same pretty much, and most of them are, but it is what it is, I guess. Going to the jungles. Uh, uh, yeah, we already read this part. Yeah, which one do we go? Hmm. Hmm. Flying high was a bad idea. And shots fired. Uh oh, there goes Madagascar. And we missed it. Well, we'll see about that. All right, everyone. So I did this like four, five, six times, and every single time we fail. Like I, Central Africa must be like hard coded or scripted to not be able to be successful. Even though I might try the Kudu event off screen just to see if it'll work, maybe. Um, so unfortunately, it didn't work. So again, the bullets started flying in a swarm. Yet each of them was neither, either shot by a mentally deranged person or the arcane protected these animals. Well, most bullets only scratched the elephants or completely missed them, some hit the desired target. Mostly of Miller's origin, the bullets seemingly didn't bother the animal at all, though. Staggeringly, it struggled its way out of the crossfire and was lost soon thereafter. Looking to the left, you could see the natives having more luck with the younglings, only one of them escaping the bullets, sadly. Or suddenly. Miller remembered the female, but before being able to shoot again, one of the predators waved back from her dead at Miller. He sent some of his men searching for the male on the ground. Miller just didn't want their return empty-handed because he refused to in integrate underdeveloped younglings' heads onto his grand collection. Either way, their grandeur was gutted by the predators, claiming their ivory prize. They even refused to hand over the female's head whole, although they had enough tusks from the group they successfully hunted, enraging Miller for just a minute. He returned to his companions, glooming about his unlucky hunt. While they returned to the helicopter to fly off again, he swore to employ the predators for the most boring operations he could think of, or maybe the mosquito banks. Whoever plays unfairly shall never hunt again. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that really sucks. Like, empty-handed. Uh, Miller boarded the helicopter again after redirecting the Predators to the vehicles of the natives. He marked the spot they had hunted on a map. Not with the intention to come back, he realized it was unlucky and wise to hunt there again regarding what had happened. He wants to know which place he had shunned when intending to hunt an elephant for his grand collection in the future after all. And we chose the correct one that gave us a higher percentage chance. Just to let you know, I did redo it, so. He gritted his teeth out in the whole way back, throwing his companies at companions that they were used to a jovial Mueller. One day I'll hunt a mighty elephant, but for now Mueller wanted to get rid of the predators in his vicinity, potentially thwarting his plans again. Therefore, he released some stress by shooting any game he saw on the way back. By the time they arrived at their home destination, the ammo of his equipment as well as that of his ten veteran companions on the helicopter was about to run dry. That day he slew more animals than, he, in, than in the whole half a year before. And that's just not the one he wanted. And the topi. Which is probably going to fail, but whatever. The Red River Hog. Red River Hogs are the African cousins of the boar. Wild boar hunting is a common pastime in Europe for the hunters all across the central mountains, from Italy to the mainland Reich. Mueller wants to have fun like in the old days, so there's no way he'll miss the opportunity to hunt bees so closely resembling to those of his homeland. Alright, let's take a look, and like normal, I apologize, this episode has been kind of wonky. Like, no matter how many times you try something, it just always fails. Like, it's, it's like when we try, uh... It's unlike the one we, when he plays America and you get the MPP party in and you try to get Hawaii back. You can reload the save and still do okay if you re reload enough times, but this one you can't. So, I oh, might do this anyways. But the topi, what do we want to use? Modern swept? Probably. Yep, that's better. And then hunting spot. Mula couldn't sleep that night. Was it something about his food? I drink too much? Something was bugging him deep down in his guts. He stood up to go relieving himself. On the way to the toilet, he passed his trophy hall and it hit him like lightning. He knew what it made him so feel so queasy. He needed to hunt again. Gladly he had some minute to, to figure out his next target. He wanted to know. His collection demanded a toppy head. And there's a buffalo. Look at that. In his office, he pondered over to the ma map where every mark his scouts had made were centralized for posterity. 
Yeah, it's the same thing. It's possibly to choose. There was a Moxico province in the northeastern part of Shanks Rex Commissariat in Sweden, West Africa. It would be a straight flight south, so Van the Mueller found to be eerily dusty and lame on the one of his visits there. But Topis liked it there and compromises had to be made for the perfect game. On the other hand, his choice fell in the northern parts of his own fiefdom, the part where light jungle canopies gave way to grassy landscapes finally disintegrating to reveal the savanna. Nothing special considering the vegetation there, yet the fauna was much more of Mueller's concern, fortunately included plenty of Toppy. Now he had to choose where he would go find the most impressive game, and where he would have the most luck with the toppy. North or south? Let's go north. North gives a little bit more of a boost. Hunt is ready. 51%, not looking good. Going to the plains, let's see... Okay, so the hel helicopter soared. Ahead of it was the northern frontier of Central Africa. Hill was covered in grass and with clusters of trees filling in the valleys, snaking along creeks and rivers yet unknown. It was a vast area where the line between the control of the Reich and the anarchy of the sub sahara was hard to distinguish, and most often was not. Almost anything could be found in these regions, and that's what made them so attractive for today's hunt. Fly, hide, stay unnoticed. Ooh, are, they're obviously in the plains. Um, stay, stay high. 60%? Shoot! We got it. The bullet hit Mueller's topi directly under the neck. A stream of blood poured the little thing seemingly dry. It collapsed soon thereafter in a puddle of what once kept it alive. The topi lay still while the others were jumping hurriedly over its dead body, desperately trying to escape in the end. Only three managed to. The others were done by, with by the green hunting boys. He promised himself to congratulate their officer and rouse the tense teenagers that had to do their sorry service to the right down here in the rowdy celebration. They approached the dead animal on the ground. Step after step, Mueller's grin widened. Barely a meter apart from his prime target, Mueller was so happy that he promised about alcoholics in his private chamber. He had seen a more impressive topi before in the years of his first visit to Wolfgang Schenk, but he hadn't cared about some trophy collection for a greater cause back then. He only started it too with progressing age. Mueller allowed the hunting youngsters to cut out the trophy pieces of their own from the topies they had shot. And he cared only about this one began the journey of acquiring his beautiful head as a trophy. And he then did give them promises. He did promise them. In the palace, there it lay, yet still bloody, yet beautiful. Mueller rested his hand on one of the toppy's horns. He liked the feeling of the ripped cornet structures on his skin. Surely those filigree and elegant horns would embellish the halls of his trophy room. He waited while the responsible concierges were informed. He looked at the collection and found the perfect positioning for this beauty. The Reich's commissar crossed his arms and proudly contemplated his work. He had slain this goatish beast. He laughed at how impressive something familiar or sim similar to those crit critters could be in his eyes. What a story to tell! No one could flee it now with the filigree atop his head, begging to have the story told. And the fine look reminded him of how many of Africa's finest creatures he already encountered, and how many of the palace's visitors will soon encounter. But now he had to give out some drinks. We can redo this, but we'll do that later on. Hey, look at this! Nice! The Red River Hog. Followed up with the elusive cheetah. If the lion is the king of the savannah, then the cheetah is a huntmaster. Capable of reaching frightening speeds when chasing his prey, and perfectly able to minimize... Uh, with the surrounding areas thanks to his maculated hide, the cheetah is the perfect example of a deadly predator. Surely the, such a hunter will make the Rex Commissar salv salivate with the prospect of turning it to prey. Needed diplomatic mission in the northern Congo. Oh boy. Let's buy some more stuff. Nice. Not bad. Mr. Steiner, Union Minere du Haut Katanga, as reports of unrest among Kantaganese workers in their minds, delays, and disobedience is becoming common, and some rumors have expressed they are preparing a strike to pressure the company to raise their wages and lower the price of goods and services sold by the network of company stores. Elizabeth Ville Surete has appointed the man behind these workers in discipline as Goldfreud Monongo, well known by the company Monongo as a figure known to the company being the grandson of Emperor Misuri of Katanga and is married to a Lunda princess, or Luanda prince, or Lunda princess, making him one of the most important traditional authorities of southern Central Africa. One of the directors advised us that Mu Munongo is the only African in the Congo the white man's brain with fingers where he can't even imagine, so violence is not an option. The common sense choice for this mission is Union Minaret's security manager and her top liaison with the Belgian community Jean Schramm and self-entitled African Blanc and the solver of the company's previous labor issues. Another possible envoy will be local fixer for British and American corporations Bruce McKenzie with vast experience doing business in Africa. One unusual option would be Colonel Dena, the leader of the 6th Commando, as many of his subordinates are close acquaintances of Munango, despite his assignment being different from his usual work. Shram? The Angles will be unhappy. We don't need other soldiers to send McKenzie. Job for Denad. Um, I like how we get different options for these guys. Well, we probably want to help out the... Oh, no, they're all happy with us. We don't need soldiers to send McKenzie. I don't want to do that. I want to piss off two people at once. Shram? Uh, let's, let's do Shram. Let's see what he does. 
All right, and like normal, we have to save just because, well, at this point, I don't even know if it's worth saving or not, because every time we I've tried to redo it off screen, because it's taking a while to do off screen, it just doesn't go. So let's do modern and swift, and let's see, where do we go? The ba Bataka Plateau, slightly northwest of Leopoldville, a straight flight, of course. Though a population thinned down ever since, the lost vast lands there boasted every kind of both savanna, natured animals, and highlands or jungle ones. The Red River Hog among them. It made for the animals preferred terrain and thus for a great hunting spot. On the hand was the Etombe Mountains. It would be straight flight there. Those mountains were not far from the nominal border of the Rexcombe Sarah Ausland and made for the breeding grounds of some of the most famed highland, as well as green savanna hunting spots and dales, it was said. Uh, what do we get? We get the event. Well, it just tells us we get the event, the Red River Hog equipment. Uh, let's go to that one, maybe. No, let's go to this one. I'm going to Batake. Wow, that really sucked. Hunt is ready? Wait, what? Oh, Native Diplomatic Commission in Northern Congo Schramm's report. The meeting between Jean Schramm and Godfroyd Monongo at the Leopold II Hotel's dining room in Elizabethville lasted long, intense hours as the two men arranged the terms of their deal until they reached a crucial point. Monongo's stipulated price was way above what Schramm was willing to pay. The blonde Belgian then tried to put pressure in hopes of closing the deal. Do you know how much this... Do you know how what is this hotel called? Leopold II, you owe your life to that man, Mr. Monongo. He took your people from the huts you were living and put you in the host hotel room. And now you're sitting in your tailored suit trying to mimic the white man and you will never be while extorting the companies created by the same man who put you in this place. Can't you look yourself in the mirror, Mr. Monongo? The mystery didn't respond to the provocation and instead took a floater from the suitcase and opened it on the table. Inside it were detailed sheets, ledgers, and documents exposing how Schramm was skimming, was skimming the company money and not providing the security he charged for, with contracts hiring soldiers that did not even exist and company weapons being sold to a third party with the profits being deposited at the bank in Leopoldville. The Belgian, knowing that the reports present, presented were true, just stood up and left the room, but not before he heard Monongo call his name and curse, Sala Flamanda. On the next day, mine workers from Kowalazi to Elizabethville didn't show up with their jobs. We shouldn't have sent a Belgium. Oh, crap. Never send a Belgium. Alright, say hi or low. Um, have a better view? Say hi, probably. Nope. That's probably not going to go. We missed it. I'm going to redo this one as well. Alright, everyone. So let's do it again one more time. And we'll take the long flight, in which now we have 28%. Shouldn't have sent a Belgium. We're going to go with modern to get 36%. And the hunt is officially on. Um, and now going to the highlands, we'll go fly low because it go down. It doesn't go down at all. We'll shoot, and we missed it. So the bullet merely scratched the creature's misshapen ear. The Hog River looked awkwardly and seemingly it signified his family to retreat swiftly via the weird noises. The success of shots were a total disaster, setting sprays of mud between the unintentionally dodging hogs. Maybe the unluckiest way bullets were ever handled in Mueller's eyes. The creatures made their escape nearly unharmed, barring one dead hoglet. They searched for the little adult hogs while some while on the ground, yet yeah. hadn't any luck with them either. Mueller just didn't want to return empty handed. He wouldn't even consider taking the tiny hog as a trophy for it looked nothing like the grown Red River hogs. Had he just claimed a river hog head trophy before, well, he could still use a stuffed one as his palace, but Mueller wasn't a man of cheating himself like this. Forced to make his peace with not slaying the escaped animal on his unlucky day, he took hold of his senses again. While they returned to the helicopter to fly off again, he swore to take the head trophies of all the hunted game from now on from here on out. About time to start with it, isn't it? Cool. And? Empty-handed. Mueller was in no way satisfied with how today's hunt went down. He should have had a river hog head hanging somewhere in his collection by now. But no, just as his ambition to capture the African wildlife on his grand trophy collection was made wall made him realize what he already botched by now. He was now holding the hoglet in his lap, ready to start cutting it with his knife during the flight back. Although he refused to do so at first, he took it with him now nonetheless. Otherwise, one might say he didn't learn anything today, even though this was neither of it very much. And we'll do the kudu hunt again. If you like to do this, please go right ahead. We'll go to the lower chad, where it's 73%. And then we're going to go modern and swift to get up to 82%. The pseudo crisis, whatever, and the hunt is ready. We're on again. And how many days are we out? We have plenty enough time for now. The hunt of Africa. Going to the savannah, if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. And we're going to keep it high, surprise them. We're at 89%. Perfect occasion. Can we do it finally? We got it. The bullet hit the kudu's limb. It collapsed to one side and painfully feral shrieked. So the wound turned the sand it fell in red, while the rest of the group swiftly took to flee the scene. As the kudu tried to l run limpingly, they fired two successive shots. Blood spattered as a deer-like thing collapsed again. It was still struggled on, and another shot. This time the collapse was eternal, bringing an end to the kudu's loud noises. They approached the dead animal on the ground. Step after step, Mueller's grin widened. He was happy beyond belief. He had slain some kudus before the time of the Cameroon conflicts, yet never since 
loudly. This particularly rare specimen, sublime horns, were about to ornament the halls of his new palace and bestow it upon the beauty and grandeur these coronets boasted. Mula quickly took hold of its horns, grinning between them as his, at his men. He tried to pull them at to prove their robustness. His men were impressed. Because some of them have never seen a kudu before, Mueller and his, the mercenary instructed them on how to get the trophy. This trophy was, was certainly worth their efforts. Finally, we got it. We finally flipping got it. And I guess we had to do another one immediately. Uh, do we let one day go by? These are too long. What? The, why, why are these 14-day focuses compared to 35, man? Why does it got to be so long? I'm not going to do it the focus until we get this one done. So, the kudu in the palace. There it was, perfectly in place. The equally beautiful and impressively shaped horns fit there excellently. Mueller still grinned at how much more sublime his grand collection became in the instant, courtesy of the kudu's head. Exalted and powerful, the grand collection still in its shabby early stages, and a skull adorned with such noble horns complemented each other flawlessly. The kudu's head promised to impress each and every any visitor Mueller hosted. He liked it. He looked at the positioning of the head, perfectly placed, that the cor that the cornets did not scratch the ceiling. The Rex Comet saw across his arms and proudly contemplated, contemplated his work. He had slain this beast. What a story to tell. No one could flee it now with the sublime Kudu's head being in the incarnation of a hunting tale worthy to tell. The imposing look let the Rex Commissar drift into Hunter's fantasy, already imagining a completed trophy collection, but for that he still had to wait. Hey, and there it is. The Kudu. Nice. Uh, and then the little Suchita. I hope to God I don't, I don't have to reload the save again. It's getting tiring reloading it all the time now. But let's go ahead and do anything else. No, not yet. I want to wait to do this off screen. And we might start the next episode with this stuff too. Just saying. Just because it's going to announce. But Wilhelm Ritter von Thoma publishes his memoirs. Have you read von Thoma's book? Asked the young staff for other Oberkommando des Heers to his colleague as he stood in the break room of the Germania office. I liked it. He had lots of interesting stories about his time in the first Valkyrie and his time in Spain, but it's really about his experience with panzer divisions during the Barbarossa and with the Africa Corps down there. The other staffer was shocked, like his co-worker just admitted to being a member of Antifa. You liked it, he asked, when he just sniped at the German army for what happened in West Russia? He wasn't there. He should be at least have the decency to keep his mouth shut, let alone criticize the ones who fought and died there. The first staffer was taken aback by the sudden hostility from the fellow staffer. I'm not defending his opinions. In fact, I think he could have been a bit more mindful with his words, but he is a general who is held in high esteem by a bunch of people. He did win the Knight's Cross, so he's well entitled to his opinion. My thoughts exactly, said a third voice. The young staffers were shocked when they saw who it was. Former General Field Marshal Aaron Rommel stepped between the staffers and began to pour himself a cup of coffee from the coffee maker. I was with Von Toma from, the, from September of 42 until the end of the war. During his time under my command, I never knew him to be anything but a dutiful and effective commander, setting the pot back into the machine. He looked at the staffers and said, if he has an opinion on the greatest disaster in German military history since 1918, then I believe his advice must be taken into his account. Ramos took a sip and walked away. The two staffers looked at each other, unable to speak for the longest time. Then the second one said, I guess I see your point. Controversy only means more sales anyways. Nice. Usually. Alright, and unfortunately, we must save again. I apologize for this. It's, it just seems like this hunting thing. It's just taking so long to do. Uh, just to get it over with. And successful. Uh, t attempting to be successful. So the crew went. Let's take a look. We are at 20%. Modern Swift. 1%. Wow, that sucks. Hunting spot. Let's see. Um, so, the first one is the Itomba Mountains. Other than the Katanga Province. Preferred terrain. What's the swiftest in? And the greeting ground is the most famous highlands. Well, I don't know about that, Katanga. So, deep. We go deep. Deep is correct. Hunt is ready. We're probably not going to be successful with this one. And keep them high to surprise them. They're probably hiding in the grasslands. Uh, we don't want to scare them off. We got to go high. Deep and high. Deep and high. He shot, and we got it. Good. Woo! We got another one. I don't have to reload the save. God dang, I hate reloading the save all the time now. The bullet completely penetrated the cheetah from the side. To Miller's surprise, the cheetah was already on his feet when he opened his eyes again, but the gaping wound was too much for the poor thing. It collapsed but moved its head for a few more seconds in a tenderly way before the lights went out, the head hitting the grass ground. The grassy ground. Blood was still running over the gaping wound, but it was over. They approached the dead animal on the ground. Step after step, Mueller's grin widened. He was happy beyond belief. He tried to slay cheetahs before, often, but always failed at this swift pace. Mike Hore clapped his hands with a smile that neither seemed patronizing nor covertly jealous. Mueller had done one deed already. He killed his first cheetah. Now, he was about to do the second for the day, claiming the reward. Yet for that time, he needed Denard's help more than ever. Truly glorious deeds, Rex Commissar, Mueller. The Armored Pangolin. If there's a strange beast here in Africa, that's a pangolin, a small animal, barely reaching the meter of a length. Uh, its greatest feature lay in its armor. There's no other way of calling the extremely hard scales covering it from head to toe like the 
Lagurica Squa Mata of Latin memory. With only its weak point, the soft belly easily covered when the pangolin closes on itself when endangered. A cold pangolin is utterly impossible to kill for normal predators, since there's no far fang sharp enough to pierce the thickest protection. We'll see whether this armor can resist a proper bullet or if needed to a PAK shell. The elusive cheetah in the palace. There it lay, flawless and beautiful. Mueller rested his hand on the lifeless head. The fur felt special. He loved the feeling of the bone structure beneath it. It was reassuring to press his hand on one of the only animal's heads that he always used to trick to see or escape him. Surely those filigree elegant ships would embellish the halls of his trophy room. He waited while the responsible concierges were informed. He looked at the collection and found the perfect positioning for his beauty. The Rex Commissar crossed his arms and proudly contemplated his work. He had slain the swiftest of beasts at last. He laughed with satisfaction how he finally had the trophy hanging that he desired just so some time ago. What a story to tell. No one can flee it now with the elusive creature's head begging to have his story told. The fine look reminded him of how many of Africa's finest creatures he had already encountered, and how many this palace's visitors will soon encounter. Swiftly shot, swiftly placed, swiftly satisfied? We'll see about that. How are people doing? Just really true to status quo. We got a few more to redo. Displeased. Oh, wait, they're displeased. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's probably because of these guys. Eh, whatever. We don't have enough pee, -pee. Seems like we, that's always going to be a problem, though. And, like normal. We will go ahead and probably save whenever this one gets done. Hopefully relatively soon. Oh, finally something else. Some technology. Good. More 20% more landing attack is a big old boon to us. Alright, and for the last one we're going to do for this episode, we're going to save. Alright. If you like to read about these, please go ahead. We're going to do it. Armored Moles. Uh, the Abataka Plateau. Um... Or, made the perfect animal's preferred train, the Katanga Province. A short flight. Wait, that, they're both preferred terrain. What the heck? That was the hardest to hunt in. Well, it was the hardest to hunt in. We don't want to go there, is, do we? We want to probably go to the label on northwest of Leopoldville. 30%. And... Plateau was incorrect. Okay, equipment. Order levels, modern and swift, probably. And the hunt is ready. Uh, and what's going to happen? Fly high. I guess we can fly high for this one, and we're probably not going to get it. And we probably got it! The bullet directly penetrated the creature's soft underbelly so ever so slightly beneath the scale's armor's roots. Just as intended, the animal collapsed into lifeless hanging, its food splattering on the dusty ground like its blood. Seconds thereafter, the tail slipped off the branch and it dropped almost into the puddle of bloodied food. Just in the vicinity of Mueller's ear, one of his companions was celebrating. Mueller nodded at him with a cocky grin. They approached the dead animal on the ground. Step after step, Mueller's grin widened, barely a meter apart. Okay, I've read that one before. Uh, he says problems with the scaled armor before do scaled armored animals before. Be due, before, due to their robustness. However, today was no such day. He could certainly be proud of himself. Merlin quickly took hold of his senses again. He lifted the penguin at its tail and whirled it around his companions. Afterward, he began the final journey to claiming his trophy. Gladly, he found a robust knife for cutting scales. Yeah, I really don't like how they... Like, it makes sense why they use the same text again and again and again, but it gets a little excessive, but in the palace. There it lay, flawless and beautiful. Mueller rested his hand on the lifeless head. The scale armor felt special. He loved the feeling moving from one scale to the other, prickling his skin. It was reassuring to press his hand on one of the animal's heads that were rarely e ra equally rare, impressive and awkwardly endowed with a strange beauty to the experienced hunter. Surely these scales, reaching all the way to the penguin's delicate forehead, would embellish the halls of his trophy room. He waited while the responsible concierges were informed, of course. He looked at the collection and found the perfect positioning for this pangolin head. The Rex Commissar crossed his arms and proudly contemplated his work. He had slain this robustly armored thing with one blow. He laughed with satisfaction how he finally had the trophy hanging from that he just desired just a few days ago. What a story to tell. No one could flee it now with the blatant appearance of the creature's head begging to have the story told. And the same thing, same text again. And how many more were there, were there to become or get? Cool, and the pangolin, cool. Very nice, but I think that's going to end it here for today, but I guess we can read the last one. The Majestic Giraffe. Giraffes are a truly unique sight in the savannah. Taller than three or more meters to reach for the tree leaves, they are so much, they love so much to eat. Giraffes are peaceful herbivores known for emitting almost no sound. Still, the quiet demeanor shouldn't fool the green hunter, for their hooves can break a lion's neck with ease, and they can reach stunning speeds when galloping. Just imagine how such a wonderful animal would tower in Mueller's trophy room. But we're going to end it there today, because I need to take a break from reading the exact same thing like 12 times over. But if you enjoyed the video... Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, and seeing if we can please the investors and hunt down these other animals. 
Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.